All right, real quick, I have an Insta now. Uh, go drop a follow if you like the content. If not, just keep watching the video. I haven't posted yet, but I probably will soon. One of the most daunting things about going to a theme park is always the lines. As much as I'd love to say that it's going to be an out-of-body experience, taking you back to the childhood, filled with giddy memories and joyful fun, it, the reality is you're going to be spending a lot of your time standing around a bunch of sweaty strangers, a lot of the time without your phone. And as much as I would love to say there's a secret trick to never wait in the line, that's just not the case. But this video is going to be about as close as it gets. As an avid theme park goer, I've compiled many tips and tricks to wait in as little lines as possible. In this video, I will share all of them with you. Don't worry, my videos don't get views, so these will still be our secrets. Anyways, without further blah blah blahing, let's start. All right, let's go for the basic stuff first. This is before you even get in the park. Have a plan of attack. You want to look at the park map far in advance. Just type in the theme park's name and just look up park map 2021 or whatever. Now this can be a bit tricky depending on the park, but this is the most important step. Planning is everything, and if you want to get on all the rides you want to get on, you're gonna to have to plan in advance. That's just how it be sometimes. Now if there's a big ride at the front of the park, you're gonna to want to skip it in the beginning. Trust me, I know it sucks walking through the park gates and seeing a big ass being I'm hyper and having to walk right by it. I know it sucks. You'll get in it later. Don't worry, but it'll be a lot, lot later. When everything first opens, you're going to want to actually go to the very back of the park. You're going to be walking by all these rides with like five, 10 minute waits and the temptation will be strong, young Skywalker, but do not give in. Remember, as Yoda once said, he who does not go to the back of the park is a fucking idiot. But in all seriousness, you're going to have to have crazy willpower to not go in the five minute waits in the middle of the park. Because yeah, even though it will be a five minute wait for the middle of the park ride. Once you get off, people will have funneled to that part of the park and everything will be about a 20 minute wait. Now that's precious time you're wasting. You're going to have to walk a lot, but you're going to be able to hit like three rides right at the beginning. I'm going to list a couple random parks I've done this at because I've done it quite often and it works almost flawlessly every time. At Magic Kingdom, I got on Big Thunder Mountain, Splash Mountain, and the Jungle Cruise with this trick. And yeah, I know that's not really the back because there's no real back of the park, but it's just off to the right. But I still think it's farther than like Tomorrowland or Fantasyland is to the entrance. So I think it's still about willpower. At Hershey Park, I got on Laugh Track, Wildcat, Lightning Racer in Fahrenheit in the first hour of the park being open with this trick. At SeaWorld Orlando, I hit Kraken and a mini marathon on Mako in the same time frame. Trust me guys, this trick is bonkers, and as annoying as it was to walk by Manta and Candemonium and Space Mountain at the front and the middle, it'll be worth it once you get to the back and it's completely dead. Now the only thing you have to worry about are those rides in the front, because usually those rides in the front are going to be the most popular just by placement, even if they're not the best, and they're always going to maintain a line throughout the day. For me, I usually have one ride in the day where I just gotta suck it up and stand. As boring as it sounds, to stand in one line for like an hour, hour and a half plus, it's less time than if you waited for 30 minutes here, 50 minutes there, an hour for that. You see what I mean? It starts to add up over time. You just gotta knock out a bunch in the morning and sit through one bad one later. That's the biggest tip I have. You're gonna have to plan specifically for yourself the order of the rides, but just get to the back of the park and get on as much as possible. The lines at the front will start to thin out a little bit towards later in the day, but it's not gonna be as thin as the back in the morning. You'll slowly start to progress through the middle and the front of the park, and ideally that one big ride at the entrance will be your last ride so the crowds aren't still swarming it. But what about the middle, the meat, the potatoes of the visit? This is actually where most of your time in line is going to be because you're going to be visiting this section at prime time. For those of you who don't know what that is, prime time for theme parks are around noon to maybe 3 p.m.-ish. That's because the morning crowd is still finishing up and the afternoon crowd is just starting to arrive. This time block is hell. Everything is going to have a line. I think the best thing you're going to have to do in this time block are high capacity rides. For Disney, you're going to want to stick to dark rides, preferably with a moving station like an omni mover or roller coasters for universal sparks just stay away from the simulators <laughs> that doesn't exactly leave you with much for parks centered around roller coasters like six flags or cedar fair parks anything with this track is high capacity anything. I'd also say if you're at a SeaWorld park, now is a good time to catch a show. It's going to get pretty hot at prime time, so getting wet wouldn't be too bad of an option if you're watching an ocean show. But if you're not about that, then just watch the show from the safe distance in the back. You should arrive to any shows about 20 minutes early for any park, SeaWorld, Disney, Universal, you name it. These shows tend to fill up pretty fast, especially with this social distancing stuff now. Although I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but I'd still say even when it's not, show up 20 minutes early. I'd also say don't eat during prime time. I actually think 4 p.m. is the perfect time to eat lunch because it's right after prime time and right before dinner so you can eat a late lunch and then get dinner on the way out. Remember, you're hardcore if you're watching this video. You're staying from rope drop to fireworks to maximize that hard-earned bread you spend. If you want to know how to save the bread, then I have a video about the... Alright, shut the f*** up. 
Go coast soon. There's no need to plug. No one's watching it anyways. Now that you've made it through prime time, you should get to the front of the park soon. Finish hitting up some of the rides. Pro tip, if you don't care about the fireworks, that's an easy like 20 minutes off all lines, but that's usually only at the big boys like Disney and Universal parks. But if you're at one of those parks and don't care about fireworks, just get in the line. It'll reduce your weight like crazy. And who knows, you might just get the perfect ride timed up with the fireworks. So at the top of the lift hill, you'll see the fireworks. Ooh. Finally, if you want to get some rerides, just do whatever you want. If you've done everything already at that point, then lines don't really matter anymore. All right, here's a couple of tips I want to speed through just so you can keep them in your mind. Show up at the park a half hour early. I know that sounds like a lot of time to be waiting, but I mean roll up to the parking lot a half hour early. It's still going to take you 10 minutes to get out your wallet, your keys, park tickets, blase blase. Then you got to go take a photo for the gram, go to the bathroom, rent a lot. Lockers. By the time you're actually at the park gate, the park opens in like five minutes. If there's a locker system at the parks, just do it. I'm not talking the ones at the front of the park. Those are nice too in some situations, but I mean at like some Six Flags parks where you need to rent a locker for each ride for like $2. There is also another option where you can rent a code to put in any locker for like $8. Just by that, it saves you a lot of time and will usually be cheaper than buying individual lockers every time. Unless you only ride four rides. In which case you didn't listen to a goddamn thing I just said. Let's talk to skip the line passes. These are little cheat codes to get on the ride as fast as possible. The problem is, these also cost a lot of money. The only chain that gives free skip passes is Disney. Their fast pass system is one of the best, and it's the only one you can't really pay to win. The closest you can get to that is to stay at a hotel. In that case, you can book your fast passes 60 days in advance so you can get them for the big rides. But the way the skip the line passes usually go is there's a completely separate line for only the people with the skip the line passes. And trust me, if it's paid, usually that line is pretty fast. For Disney parks, sometimes there can be a short wait, but it's usually exponentially shorter than the regular standby. For other parks, it's usually a walk-on, or maybe five minutes. These can get pretty pricey though, so I'd say if you're gonna do it, just do it. Don't half-ass it, don't get the cheaper tier, the silver, whatever. If you're spending like 60 bucks already, just bump it up to 100 to get the full experience. If you do this, then nothing I say in this video matters. Get the line makes the lines an afterthought at a park. They're pricey, but depending on what park you're going to, it's worth it. I'd say go for these at any Universal Park, Cedar Point, the two Busch Gardens parks, Flags, Magic Mountain, and maybe Dollywood or Hershey Park. I think though those last two can be done without a skip the line, but it certainly helps. Next, I want to talk about food because the lines for food can actually be some of the longest of the day. Earlier, I said eat off hours like four, but even then the lines can be long. So I'd say if there's a mobile food ordering app, definitely go for that. Every Six Flags Park has a mobile food ordering app for most of their restaurants. So if it's there, definitely take advantage of it. Okay, two super important tips right here. First, if there's a single rider line, get the f in it. I don't care. Your party's gonna be split up, whatever. It'll take a two hour line and bring it to 30 minutes. It's crazy how fast these lines are. Not every park has these and within those parks, not every ride has these, but if it's there, just go, just get in it. Yeah, it sucks splitting up with your party, but it sucks even more waiting two hours for a minute ride. The other big tip is the day you go. I'm not talking spring break, summer vacation, whatever, because obviously some people can't control that. They take a vacation whenever they can take a vacation. And a lot of the time, yeah, it lands on those vacation weeks. Duh. But I mean, what actual day of the week are you going? If possible, do your best not to go on Saturday. I get it. Saturdays are nice because you can stay late and sleep in on Sunday. It's the first full day of the weekend. It's it's really nice. But everyone else is thinking the exact same thing as you. Try and go for a weekday, any weekday, even Friday. On Fridays, the crowds will start to come in in the evening, but by then you've probably gotten on everything. Even Sundays can be fine. If you must go on a weekend day, definitely go on the Sunday. But just by all means, avoid Saturday. The 15 minute wait on a two Tuesday will be like a 50 on a Saturday, but just try your best to go on a weekday. It really helps. The last thing I want to throw in quickly is apps. A lot of these parks have apps and on some of them, they will have wait times. Now this is dicey. Some of them don't have wait times, but like the big ones like Disney, I think Universal, and I know for a fact that Hershey Park has it. So you can check those apps to see what all the rides wait times are. It's questionable how accurate these are, but if they are accurate, then it's a huge help. Not every park has these, but for the ones that do definitely take advantage of it. It's a lightsaber. Oh, last thing for real this time, uh, the wait times post posted at the ride entrance are usually overshooting it. The only time it's accurate is if it says two hours or more. If it's two hours or more, you're actually gonna be waiting two hours, sorry. But if it says a random ass wait time, like 75 minutes or something, then you're actually gonna be on a good 15, 20 minutes before it says. Trust me, they always overshoot it. I don't know why. And that's pretty much it. That's all I got. If you keep all of these in mind, you should be in pretty good shape with the lines. I hope you have a lovely day at the park of your choice. And if you utilize any of these, let me know. Remember, there's a new Instagram and subscribe here and follow the Instagram. Whatever.